Hello everybody, good morning. Welcome to the channel. My name is Benjamin Shipper. I am a cartoonist and this is my um, first graphic novel publishing next year, March 21st, 2023. Um, and it is all things I love about um, uh, cartooning and also epic fantasy um, and animation uh, all rolled into a new, a new world. I've really invested a lot of time in this book um, to make it sort of out of whole, out of whole cloth. So this is a new world. This is a new character, a new, uh, cosmology is created. Um, and, uh, I really hope, uh, you all enjoy it. I think you will. Um, this is the front cover and, um, this is, a uh, this is the back cover. Um, and, uh, I am, I'm so excited to see it all in print and, um, it is available right now, uh, wherever books are sold um, for pre-order. So please, uh, go ahead and pre-order that if you think you, you, you want it. Um, and, uh, tell a friend, um, if you want to order something from me right now, um, support this channel and my work. Um, I'm selling this, uh, tractor zine. <laughs> so it's about 16 pages, um, uh, of full, uh, full, full spread, uh, tractors. Uh, my son was really, uh, into tractors, um, still is. He's on, he's on the train, so maybe we'll have a train one soon, but, um, this was just one of the ways in which I was like, oh man, maybe I can, maybe I can show him that dad's kind of cool and hip, and, uh, he is two years old, so <laughs> it wasn't too hard. But I think he, he was a fan of this. I think he will be too. Um, try to put as much love in, uh, into everything as possible, and uh, I'm really proud of this one, so. Um, you can order that on my website, benjaminshipper.com. Links uh, below in the description. Um, this channel is, uh, is primarily uh, concerned with reviewing comics um, and just beautiful uh, art objects and books. And um, this is, uh, this is uh, very much from my past. Um, this is a, a book, uh, Star Wars... Um, licensed property when Dark Horse Comics had the license back in 2002. And I don't like gush on about Star Wars because there's so much, uh, so much love uh, that I have for, for the original movies and, um, for the original EU before, um, the Disney, the Disney buy and, um, contentious subject, I think, uh, these days, but, um, I, I'm getting less and less, uh, I feel less and less a problem of um, just uh, talking and sharing what I what I loved about those original um, movies and series when it was all tied under um, one kind of headship of of George Lucas Lucas books um, and the people that um, carried on uh, in so many different ways the the license and the property of Star Wars um, uh, with George Lucas himself at the, at the top. Um, there's a lot of crazy stuff in the EU, uh, a lot of, um, uh, campy stuff, uh, a lot of, um, you know, there's just so much variety of like excellence and quality. Um, and I'm, I certainly haven't read it all. Uh, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm okay with liking some things a lot better than others. Um, and, um, but it, overall it's a fun, fun world to uh, revisit and to think about. And, um, this, uh, this book, uh, Star Wars Jango Fett is a double size, double size issue. It is a painted comic. Um, and the artwork is by Tom Fowler, um, who, do, who has done, he's a Canadian cartoonist and he's done work for Mad Magazine. Um, and I believe a bunch of other stuff. Um, I got to meet him at, uh, at, um, Heroes Con years ago. Um, and, uh, he shared some a good some good wisdom with me. Um, the story is by Ron Mars, who I don't know uh, his work um, from anything else, um, but this is a well written comic book, um, well drawn, well executed on every level, uh, I think, and so it's worthy of of note. Not just because it's hey it's Star Wars, but it's because it's it's it was actually a successful one in the medium that the license was um, commissioned. Uh, everything except for this cover. <laughs> so, uh, I hate, I, I really dislike it when, um, when, well, generally when covers are done by somebody else 
except for the it, done by someone else who doesn't execute the interior of the page. I feel like it's false advertising a lot of times. Um, I know it's a comic thing, but uh, this especially is like a movie still, and you know you've got your you've got your uh, your movie version of Django Fett, and it's a uh, it's a sales tactic. It's like Disney, you know, or sorry, not Disney, but it's just movie people thinking, hey, let's get them let's get them interested in what's inside by having this. And I just want you know comic. I think generally comic. Um, enthusiasts want the whole thing to be done by uh, the cartoonist um, and so when it's when it's got this it's like ah, I don't have any affection for this cover at all but inside uh, you know it it's it's still a good book um, but you just have to get through that sort of movie BS kind of stuff um, and uh, here you go again you know another pinup you know it's like this doesn't do anything for me you know, even this like BS graphic design kind of stuff. Like, what is that? What is that? Honestly. Um, this should just be white. <laughs> uh, but great character development. This is, um, uh, uh, you know, hands. It's it's showing distance um, or a little bit of mystery. We don't know who, who this person is. Uh, their hands are playing with toys. And um, I think that immediately gets people, everyone, everyone who knows Star Wars, is associated with the toys in some way. And to have this moment where it's like, oh yeah, like this is, you know, this is meta essentially. I mean, that, that there's toys inside Star Wars in which a boy would play um, adventure. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's good. And um, we hear, yep. Um, so uh, really nice touches all throughout um, I'm just going to point them out. So it's, it is, um, little, little Boba Fett, uh, Django Fett's, uh, son, uh, or sort of pure clone, um, as we know him. Um, he's playing with Django Fett and the, uh, the Trade Federation troops, droids, and we see someone approaching you know, a dark, a dark figure that, uh, looks exactly like a Trade Federation droid. You know, it's got a gun here and, um, it's just a silhouette. But we see, you know, in the second panel, mystery doesn't last too much, but it's still a great, um, great nod to it. Like, oh no, like, uh oh. And then it's just a, a droid, house droid with a tray with some food. And um, who's taking care of Baba while his father is away. And uh, he's like, oh, you know, when's dad coming back? Um, droid says, you know, uh, when he's done working. And then we get... Uh, you know, the, the job site, as it were, um, you know, classic setup with, uh, with some moons, multiple moons, which of course is, uh, is possible, I guess, in a, in a, in a real galaxy, multiple suns, like on Tatooine, not possible, but anyway, <laughs> um, first guard gets, uh, nailed in the neck by a, a dart, nice, um, Good grouping of like um, uh, just images. Um, we get a nine panel page in which uh, Shadow uh, and Silhouette are thrown. You know, we see Jango Fett's outline, and um, but we we don't we don't see him fully in this whole spread, which is great. It's like we all know who who it is, but and so we don't need to see him. So we don't need to see. Uh, him on every panel, and we get his foot here, and and the the tone of of the of the whole um, atmosphere of guards and uh, alleyways and um, shadowed hangings, uh, and um, really cool. Uh, I think I think Tom Fowler's work is really organic. Like his um, his uh, characters are very fleshy. Uh, he knows sort of the, the folds of kind of, um, the folds of flesh, which I feel like I've said before on this channel and, uh, regret it, but I, I don't have another, uh, another word for it. Um, and, um, the, uh, the sort of the, the jowls kind of moving of this, uh, of this alien here, um, really, really is good, uh, cartooning. 
Um, and uh, again, we see we see hands with uh, doing something with um, words overlaid, and that's I, I think that's a really successful thing to do. It's a really artful thing, I think, um, to have that type of um, cinematography. So this is uh, someone you know, someone very wealthy asking for someone else to bring him really good wine, and um, it uh, it's this guy. And he uh, he approaches the shadows um, where his servant is supposed to be, and Django Fett pops out. And a lot of this book ha has actually, um, you know, sort of gruesome depictions of death. There's there's even blood in this in this issue, and that's a very kind of un Star Warsy thing. Um, but you know, there's a lot of choking in Star Wars, and uh, but it's sort of forced choking, and um, you know, just to have this lifeless uh, alien here hanging by a by a thread, um, you know, choked to death. I thought was a little bit more uh, mature, but at the time and now, I think it's I think it's appropriate for for a bounty hunter book, um, and uh, get a full full shot of of uh, Django, and great great dialogue. Um, this is a Black Sun Vigo. Um, they're kind of like uh, crime bosses, I guess. Um, I guess based on kind of this the idea of a mafia, a big uh, crime syndicate. And um, they talk and uh, turns out um, a hut, uh, you know, the competing gangsters in the Star Wars world hired Django to um, off this guy. And um, the dialogue is really nice. Like it's not um, pedantic. It's not over ex expletive um, or over explaining. It's very characteristic of um, who these characters would be. And um, this guy even, you know, gives him a gives him a toast. Dread on, dread on the hut is the guy. And so he sort of takes his last drink, and Django shoots him. And you know, poetic kind of here that. This isn't, I'm not, this isn't blood, this is wine, because we know it just dropped, but that's, you know, classic film, or classic iconography for, you know, blood. <laughs> it's like, it's not, but it is, it totally is, but it's not. <laughs> um, so, uh, get some wides all the way down uh, of uh, Django Fett, zooming to a classic kind of, Yavin 4 jungle kind of place. Um, if you see the, um, the hut's tail, you know, great, great lead up. I think all of these transitions are really successful because we, it's like we get the hut later, but just to have this idea of like show a little piece of the hut and then, and then lead up um, is great. And this, I thought, I think is just a wonderful panel. Um, loved it as a kid. Uh, and it's like, you know, it's full of flesh. I mean, come on, you know, wow. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, it's sort of a horror element uh, to the whole Star Wars universe. Um, this is great, great big eyeballs popping out. Um, green slime and sludge everywhere. It's, it's goofy, but, um, but it's, it's good. It's goofy, but it's good. Um, so... He, he was supposed to collect money from Dredden for killing the Black Sun Vigo, um, but of course he can't now. And uh, who, should, uh, who should be behind this, this dastardly deed but, but uh, Princess Lit, no, <laughs> uh, Sam, Sam Wessel. So she, was, she is uh, a, a shapeshifter, and um, she was in, uh, in uh, Attack of the Clones, episode two. Um, as a as a bounty hunter, um, fully clothed in that one, uh, but here uh, we we get a different shape and a different costume for her um, uh, to fit in with the whole trope of uh, trope of huts and um, their their uh, their um, their love of undressed women, I guess, um, and so. Uh, they get they get a little back and forth banter. They know each other are are of course uh, competing bounty hunters, and um, 
and they realized that the Black Sun Vigo hired Zam to kill Dredden, and Dredden hired Django to kill the Black Sun Vigo. So uh, this probably has been done before in um, kind of like heist and hitman genre, but um, this is the first time I, I saw it as a kid, and um, I still like it a lot. It's just like, oh, you know, that makes sense. You know, two people that, uh, two gangsters that really hate each other hire um, people to kill each other. And uh, it's just, you know, it, there's no, there's no disbelief there. It's like, yeah, I, I can see that absolutely happening. And, um, and what a, a, a little, a uh, little coinky dink um, that, uh, that these uh, bounty hunters are now together again. Um, it provides a little uh, adventure and, um, there's, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's guns are drawn and there's a little bit of a uh, flirting here. Um, and they, uh, they don't want to let their guard down. So also a classic, um, classic romance. It's, I, I was, you know, again, as a kid and, uh, still now it, it works. And I really like this kind of thing where, um, genres aren't, um, we're not paralyzed by a type of genre, but it's all all together. Um, uh, this type of um, potential romance uh, between two characters, and uh, Django cuts his losses, and they they part ways, and uh, Django is back uh, on the water world, which is uh, Camino, and uh, gives Baba a big hug. Immediately like like this, you know, a family man um, taking care of his, his son. And uh, though still, of course, um, tied to work. Um, and the droid says, hey, there's, you know, there's a, another job that's quite lucrative, possibly lucrative uh, on, the, on the answering machine. And so Django is like, well, obviously I want to be here with my son, but that last job didn't pan out well at all. So... We're going to see what's waiting for me. Gets a little message. Um, so this is a painted comic, uh, but his forms and his linear work um, are good. Like they're not, it's not overly painty, if that makes sense. Um, I, I, uh, I never thought of this as a painted comic actually until, until recently. But um, uh, speaking of Tom Fowler and painting, so when I was at Heroes Con, uh, I don't know, five or six years ago, maybe even longer, um, I was uh, out of college and uh, didn't have a lot of disposable income. And I was looking at all this, uh, his work there and, and just uh, gouache. I think he paints a lot in gouache. And I was saying, you know, oh, that, that looks like really expensive to just use gouache all the time. And he said, Listen, kid, I'm a big boy. I mean, if I get if I get paid to um, to do a cover of Mad, think about how much money that is, and think about how much money the paint set is. So don't don't uh, skimp on the appropriate tools to execute high dollar jobs. I was like, oh, you know, that makes total sense. Like I, I was getting uh, this idea of like being you know, it, it's not, um, a prosperity mindset as, as, uh, I think is what I would call it, you know, getting what you need that with tools and material that you need to execute, um, potential jobs, uh, that will pay, um, much more for you to afford that, uh, afford those tools. It's, it's a business in expense and it's a, a very worthy business expense. Um, but here, uh, he drops, um, this, so this is, uh, an interesting technical feature, um, in his painting, he drops the blacks, um, or the really darks for, uh, for this, you know, classic Star Wars, um, holograms, um, and, uh, a little bit like a, a holding line, but, um, this, uh, uh, Doug, uh, an alien species that we know from episode one gives him a message, says this job is going to be awesome for your bank account. Um, and, uh, 
he's probably going to take it. But, and Baba's like, oh, you know, do you have to go now? And he says, you know, no, not right now. And again, it's like we all, oh, you know, he's got time for, he's got time for the kid. Like that's a, that's a good father. I mean, you can't, you, you can say anything you want about the character of, uh, of, of, you know, what, what they do and who they are and stuff. But if they, if they spend time for their kids, it's, they're, they're, um, they're likable is, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then we go, you know, we dive back into, uh, seedy underworld, um, a little, little nicer of a place and of, of an establishment than the last one he was in. Um, but, uh, some classic, uh, you know, Twi'leks without, uh, without much on. Again, it's a, a feature of the Star Wars under, underworld to have this type of showgirl, uh, thing and, um, uh, flirting with, flirting with Django, but he's on business and he's not into, he's not, he's not, he's not moving. He's not budging. Um, and, uh, wades his way through the crowd, uh, doesn't, doesn't need to get tough with the bartender because the bartender knows who he is, but there's a little hand on his shoulder, um, who's, uh, who's out for, out for, um, some kind of notoriety. It's a little, uh, weasel character, um, which, uh, I think is nice. It's not, uh, I don't think it's one that we've seen in the Star Wars universe. Um, either of these, uh, I think, I think we have seen this alien, but, um, super successful kind of organic drawing, um, with the big nose and teeth and everything. And, uh, they're, they're out to get some notoriety, both of this, this little team. And they want to, they want to kill Jango Fett, make it be known that, that they're, they're, they're the ones that did it. So that doesn't go well. Um, and he's quickly, he's quickly on the move again. And, uh, makes a point, goes into, uh, the Doug's little, um, office, I suppose. And we get a, a light, a light change, which, uh, I think is, a, it's nice. It's important. Um, in it, it's work, it works out really well. And, um, I would suggest it and use it whenever I can. Um, going from very, very sort of monochromatic purple to monochromatic green and yellow and having that little part of the curtain right here in this panel and then the hand here and, and it's a little bit, got a little bit of purple on it and um purple outline and now he's in and there he's listening to the job uh and the job is to recover a uh a, an interesting religious artifact from someone who stole it, supposedly stole it from the Doug's employer. So the Doug is himself an, an in-between for someone else. And um, it's just a, a, a rare collection from a, uh, an important collector uh, who wants his art piece back. Um, but uh, Django Fett needs to know who he's working for, but he, that can't be given. So he asks for double the price and uh, the Doug is like, okay, you know, it's done. And I'm sure Jango's like, oh, I should ask for, should ask for triple the price. <laughs> but um, he takes the job and again, we get the tr re transition. And this, this especially is a really nice touch from uh, Tom Fowler um, is we see the purple outside through the, through the curtains. Django goes out, his back is still inside the curtain. And so it's still green curtain starts to close and we get this, this, um, more of a hot purple and pink, uh, in that, in that gap. And it's just like, oh, it's just, it's just great. The little touch that he's now outside, you know, obviously it's needed to see that separation, but, um, it's really well done and it makes it feel, you know, it, it makes me feel like it's a, there's a dimension there. Um, and the Doug, calls up his boss and says he took the job. Um, so Django, um, now on the job, zoom in, uh, we get, you know, this again is like very animated. I feel like I've seen this in just tons of, uh, animated movies. One being, um, I think the Emperor's New Groove, you know, a little bug 
then uh, he eats that little bug, and then that little bug gets eaten by a bigger bug, and then, boom, uh, a ship gets, um, just like makes it all superfluous. So we get a really small world to a larger world, and um, we're back into the action. Um, Django is talking to his droids, saying, uh, you know, this isn't going to take very long, he, he thinks. Um, and also, hey, my jetpack isn't firing too well. I thought I told you to fix that. And the droid uh, gives him a, 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 you know, probably a plausible excuse that I didn't have time. You you went away so fast. And um, Django's not too too reassured that his uh, jetpack will work. But um, he goes off. He's pretty confident, I think, this is going to work out to his advantage. Um, full page spread of the temple in which he thinks the artifact is being hidden. Um, we get a inset panels, boom, 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 boom. I don't think those those get a little muddy. There should I think that there should have been some white space. Um, there I think there should have either been white space between uh, uh, this panel and the big panel, or if this panel could get lighter. I think if there were less blacks and and um, and the values were were different, th this could work without um, white borders to these panels. But um, I would have liked a little bit more separation. But great, uh, like Baba stance, like his armor, and he he looks like a cool action figure. <laughs> um, startled by a bird, nice uh, kind of flora and fauna touch. Um, travels into um, kind of a, a more of a man-made uh, civilization that's ruins now. Um, we get this tiny Baba here, which we see, and then there's another uh, little Baba down here. Uh, sorry, Django, uh, which is really hard to see. Uh, like that didn't, that wasn't as, as successful as far as uh, as far as uh, getting his silhouette, um, but. Giant hole in the floor, um, uh, a set piece, and uh, I love how I, I love what happens in these following pages. I think, um, you yeah, know, this seems like it could be easily surmountable to a, a um, kind of an, a an action hero kind of, and I like that there's peril even in even in the landscape. So he just tries to you know walk across. Uh, doesn't work, uh, falls falls through the floor, and is um, clicking his uh, his start for the jetpack, and um, doesn't work out, um, and uh, he fires instead a little grappling hook to um, make sure he gets, make sure he doesn't die. Um, well, in the process, he loses his gun, which I think is an interesting thing. Um, that didn't necessarily have to be there, but um, is nice, like, uh, to see stuff coming off a character or, um, you know, battle damage accrued over time. Um, and uh, climbs up, and uh, peril to peril, he is attacked by this giant um, crustacean. <laughs> uh, and, like... I think it's really nice that he gets this, um, he gets this danger and then another danger. So it's like danger to danger instead of like, if he were just walking and this, uh, alien attacks him, um, it's nice that it's, it's from one to the other. And, uh, he gets banged around, gets a shot off, doesn't, doesn't do a whole lot with the armor. So he pulls out, um, some explosives throws it at the, the beast and uh, gets knocked sideways in the process and um, he just runs away. It looks like the creature kind of falls into the gap um, and uh, then we're on and we're hearing some uh, obviously alien language. Um, I like that it's it's a little readable. It's not like so far removed um, from like a, a hand script. The lettering is really nice there. And it is uh, a, a worshiper at this temple, um, possibly. Oh yes, we do see that uh, it is the the thief that has brought the uh, 
object back. Um, Jenga wants it, and uh, the um, alien spins around, and what looks like pushes, uh, you know, sort of air pushes away uh, Jango's gun, which is is nice. We're we're kind of like, oh, is you know, he, maybe is he a Jedi or what even is happening? Did he just um, knock him uh, with you know physically with his hands? But we we see there's something happening here that's invisible. And um, we get a question mark from Django, which means we don't, he doesn't necessarily know what's just happened, but his gun goes flying. Um, and uh, we get a classic kind of Dragon Ball pose uh, to push uh, a fireball into Django's vest, uh, Django Fett's chest, um, or, or, or force, force push. And uh, the alien is running off. Django takes a shot and says, uh, you know, calls him a, a force sensitive, which, um, which is, which is interesting. And it, it's definitely in the Star Wars lore that, um, there are people that aren't necessarily Jedi, but they are force sensitive. So they're not in the, um, quote unquote Catholic church of, uh, of the force, but they are, um, spiritually attuned and gifted, uh, uh, to be a conduit of the force. Um, he falls down, tries to reach out for the uh, idol or the, the art object and palm, palm slap, slaps on uh, concrete as Django gets it instead. And um, we get that uh, the alien knows uh, English or basic at least. Basic is, is the type of um, <laughs> the thing that Star Wars creators have uh, called essentially English. Um, but of course, there's no England in Star Wars, so basic it, it is. Um, and the uh, alien says, uh, you know, it must be, it must be returned to the mother. So this, this object is a little child uh, figurine, and it must be um, returned to the mother's womb. Um, uh, or else uh, suffer the consequences. It is the destroyer of worlds. So I think I think it's a nice. Uh, it's always a nice title uh, to inspire fear or grandness. You know, the destroyer of worlds. I feel like that is kind of a Marvel um, Galactus type of thing. Um, but also in in literature as well. Um, and we get we get uh, honest to goodness blood here. Uh, a little purpley, um, but uh, again, in a Star Wars uh, Star Wars comic, that's not um, um, well, it is done more than just this one comic. But uh, it's it's a nice touch, um, I think, to just to give give a little more gravitas. Um, so walks away, kind of doesn't doesn't thinks. I think he thinks about it, but um, he needs that he needs that cash, so he washes walks away. And uh, we get a turnaround Django moment. And here we are again, back at the start. Uh, Zam Wessel gets the drop on him. And uh, we realize that um, the pool of, uh, of competent bounty hunters is incredibly small because uh, the Doug hired her to, um, to get the idol if Django Fett failed. So insurance policy, it's like, why, sh why send... Um, Send one if you if you really need it. Send two, um, and <clears throat> let them fight over it. Um, and uh, when dealing with dangerous people, I just I just wouldn't do that, I suppose. But it it has been done, and she uh, um, is working him over for the idol. She takes it from him. She and she, she wants a little more. She wants uh she wants the helmet off. Check out who who is behind it, and um, and. She seems into it, but uh, I think he does this to uh, let the um, crustacean monster, whom he thought he destroyed, uh, sneak up on her. So I gotta, I gotta think he's doing this because he's like, well, she's not gonna remember me because she's gonna be dead because um, uh, this thing gets the drop on her, and he gets the idol and runs away very fast. Um, and, uh, 
just a great uh, moment where he he gets halfway, and then he's we get a little sigh, and then we get his you know he's running back, um, which the um, the figure work here is really fun. Like he's we can tell he's really running over rubble and um, really animated. Coming back in, drawing gun uh, and getting getting back in the fray. Um, and we're like, oh, he, he does like, he does like Sam. He's, he's kind of into her as well. Um, or at least a professional courtesy, which he, uh, it's really not a professional courtesy. I, I believe probably bounty hunters are like, yeah, that's what, that's what definitely, um, that, uh, that other, uh, bounty hunter deserved. But, um, so, so yeah, there is some affection there between them. He tells her to, uh, drop all the explosives and uh, she's like, wow, that's not a good idea because we're, we're still close. And he says, and he pushes off into the abyss and trusts to fate, clicks his uh, jetpack, which does um, whoosh them uh, far away as the whole earth explodes. And um, a really nice, like, um, pause uh and feels very much like luke in uh hoth and we get a lot of um atmosphere of uh in this case sand in that case snow uh, obscuring our, our view and um again classic romance uh pose after after uh adventure um face to face uh in in the the laid down posture um, and, uh, just kind of happy to be both alive. Um, and she, uh, now owes him her life. And so it's, uh, so she, she lets him out of the idol and, um, is like, oh, I'll, I'll see you again, I'm sure. And, uh, they part. He gives a, l a little, little, uh, little smile, um, drops off the idol on, uh, I believe Coruscant, um, and talks to the Doug, super angry uh, that he was tricked in that way. Um, so makes it makes a bold threat that he'll kill him if he ever sees him again. Don't ever contact me again. Um, a really nice like uh, way of showing the emotion of the Doug in um, Jenga Fett's face. I think I'm sure people have used that before, but. This is like one of the best, one of the best ways, or one of the best panels of that I've seen. Really love that um, image. <coughs> Excuse me. And we get to see the 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 bigger man behind the littler man, um, the art uh, collector. Um, uh, very um, uh, very interested in this object as the destroyer of worlds so he knows he knows what it can do and um he he wants that power to destroy um a world and uh is is most definitely like um uh, kind of a religious fanatic saying this last line nothing will stop us from destroying the heart of this corrupted sickly republic you know so it's sort of this like person with the idea of of health uh, uh, as not being this conglomeration of planets and peoples, it's, there's, there is, um, there is, uh, there's a sickness and a corruption happening. And he, he is the guy with, uh, with the, the knowledge and the, um, the power to do something about it. So that is him. And we do get the last, uh, page <clears throat> as, uh, Django returning to Camino to hug his, Dear sweet, uh, small clone of himself, uh, Boba Fett. Um, and, uh, the, uh, father-son relationship is, um, is set up well. And, uh, we, we get that. We feel, uh, an affection, uh, for, for him as the protagonist of this story, at least. Um, and, uh, um, this, uh, and we're done with, done with this chapter. This is actually the first part of a two-part series in this, um, 
in the series, which doesn't have a name. It's it's just two parts. It, this one's called Django Fett, and the next one is called Zam Wessel. Um, there's the cover for it. Um, and it it doesn't have a name, the, 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 but there is a through there's a through story. So it's odd that it's not called Django and Zam, or I don't know some some other title. Um, but it's a well it's a well developed story. Um, I didn't I don't I think the uh, the other book, the Zam Wessel book, is still at my parents because um, I just didn't like the art as much. Um, though the writing, I think, is is good, um, and uh, it's a it's an interesting story all throughout. I just didn't want to have it in my uh, library because I think this one was was more worthwhile. Like I was I was satisfied with everything, and um, really liked this one. So Tom Fowler, pat yourself on the back um, and uh, check out his work. I think he's still pretty active on Instagram and has done uh, a lot of other work. And uh, Ron, Ron Mars, really the writing of this book was, was, was good. Uh, I, I really liked um, the sparseness of it, uh, the, the directness of it, and a lot of times the dialogue. Um, so great, great stuff. Again, this is uh, Joe Death and the Graven Image, my first graphic novel coming out next year, March 21st, 2023. Uh, please pre-order it if you think you want it and um, tell a friend about it. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.